Hi, I'm John Adams, Greg Grove from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WW. And speaking of food, one of my favorites, my favorites, Robert Harrison is joining me. Yes, and I'm does. saying he's my favorite. Malik knows why I'm saying he's my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome to be out here with you today. You, you know what? If you don't know Robert, you need to get to know him. He is of Loretta's authentic pralines. And let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you. Um, you know, thinking of her, obviously. And you've now taken the helm and you're moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have some of the most unique pralines in the city of New Orleans and the unique beignets, by the way. Yes, we have our crab beignet. We have our famous Pauline beignet, and this was all a, a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it, and she took two things that were so New Orleans, right. and she mashed them together. You have the Pauline filling, Pauline icing, and then we have the nerve to do powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes. It's yeah. so amazing. Look, you know, one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies. Oh, yes. Yes, and we have that out here. We also have our shoe sole, our proline cookie, and our original proline. I would tell you this. Now that you guys are moving forward, I know that you're very busy, staying really yes. busy. Any major changes that are happening right now? Something new you introduced to the menu that we'll see at French Quarter Fest? So we also have our proline shoe sole, which is a flat pastry made of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also bought out our world famous, pictured here, Ooh. stuffed crab meat beignet. Okay. And we do that with lump jumbo crab meat, a uh -huh. little bit of awesome sauce. Okay. And we just throw the holy trinity in there. It's just you know so what? awesome. You make sure you stop by and you get you some, Robert. Thank you so much thank for you. joining us and taking a picture over at the WWL yes, Love Louisiana yes, yes. State. Tell everybody to come on out. Oh, please come on out, First Quarter <laughs> Fest 22. We're getting ready to celebrate French Quarter Festival. Presented by Chevron, it all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. From WWL, Louisiana. Sharice Gibson coming to you live from the Love Louisiana stage, right next to the Jack over here at Spanish Plaza, and it is of French Quarter Fest 2024, and it is a gorgeous day. The weather is perfect, complete opposite to what it was yesterday. I am here with one of my favorite DJs. Well, he really is my favorite DJ, DJ Raj Smooth. And I know that a lot of y'all know who DJ Raj Smooth is. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Okay, so now you're not just out here enjoying the festival. Oh, no. We were just having a conversation about the DJ uh, stage that they the have Posigen now. The Posigen DJ stage going yeah. on right in Spanish Plaza. Yeah, you got that. You were involved with that. Yeah, I helped it out you know helped uh, curate some of the DJs and you know put the whole idea together so you know I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it with French Quarter Fest that we could bring some hip-hop to the uh, to the scene out here you know what and if, if guys don't know you the younger people may only see you at ace younger people may see you DJing mm -hmm. whether it's at the Pelicans games or there's at the Saints games you are literally the DJ of New Orleans you are everywhere but you have a storied history I mean we go all the way back to cash money I mean, even before that, like right. that was that was a decade in. You right. know, like I started in junior high school. Shout out to all the Livingston Seagulls <laughs> out there. Uh, you know, but through junior high school, high school, college at Dillard, right. um, it's, it's it's been my life. It's been my career. Like I've I've never had a day job. Right. So you know, it's, it's been a, an amazing experience, and you know, 30 plus years doing it, and you know, I'm just happy that I can still get on stages and talk to people. You know. Yeah. Like this. Well, so. you know, I love the fact that I can see you everywhere. I mean, my, fa you know, I always give you a hug when I see you at mm -hmm. A's. I always recognize when, you know, when Raj Smoove is playing. Trust me, he always gets the room turned up, whether it's a game or anything, you know, just you have a particular touch. What is your secret? Is there like a Raj Smoove sort of DJ secret you have? It's just, just paying attention. That distinguishes you? Paying attention to the room and, and making sure, you know, you play the right song at the right time. Right. You know, like, there's a, a lot of different, you know, vibes, genres, energies, 
um, and just, you know, trying to find that, that middle ground and get everybody in there having a good time and just loosened up. Well, I know that right now there's a big demand for different genres of music. So you have Afrobeats that's really getting hot right now. Hot. It's getting a lot of people out there on the scene and on the dance floor. How do you keep up with all of it? Do you just kind of pay attention to what's on the charts? Um, I don't really pay attention to the charts. Like, I, again, I pay attention to the people, you right. know, like, what might I hear somebody playing when they're driving down the street? You know, what is it that uh, folks come and request? Like, what are the people that I'm around listening to? You know, what are some things that I happen to come across that I like? You know, because right. a lot of times the songs on the radio are not the records that go all the way up. Really? So, you know, just finding those, you know, the little niche songs that you play and people are like, yo, like, I didn't know anybody else knew about that. Like, right. I appreciate you for playing it for me. Right. So, you know, being able to make those personal connections even within a larger crowd, I think is very important. I have to say, as a person who sometimes is on the club scene in New Orleans, the club scene in New Orleans is typically different mm -hmm. uh, than the club scene in other cities. Mm -hmm. So what is it different for you? Like when you play and you DJ here, what gets the crowd moving here versus someone in Dallas or someone in New York City? I mean, every, region kind of has its own style of music right. you know like we have bounce music and once you kind of get like 30 miles outside new orleans you got like ratchet you know saying right, music right, and right. uh you know the jig stuff you know texas has their own style atlanta has their own style so you know a lot of that just comes from the culture and from the experience like a lot of the music we rock to down here with the bounce music has a lot of you know jazz and brass band right. influences in it with the rhythms and all the second line stuff so you know playing music that speaks to the audience that you're in front of so even when i would travel and you know be out of town doing stuff what's hot in those cities you know what i'm saying and knowing what those people react to because it's not uh like i'm there to play what the people want to hear right so that they can have a good time do you typically find yourself now you're how many how many years in the game oh my goodness 34 34 years in the game do you feel like you have served now as a mentor to other younger days that are coming up because i I've, see a lot I've, of people in your way i've definitely tried to uh react you know saying like my dad um is a is a jazz musician and composer and uh an educator you know saying so it's like when when I was little, little, and people would be coming to the house and he would be like schooling them and teaching them. And, you know, if, if there's nothing else I've tried to do to father, follow in my father's footsteps was, right. you know, to, uh, to be a mentor in that regard and pass on the knowledge and the things that I've learned to the next generation. Well, you told me earlier today that you had some involvement with the stage for the DJs mm -hmm. now. Um, you were also on the board for yes. Quarter Fest. So how did this conversation come about? Why did you think having on stage was important? I mean, you know, I, I've been doing my thing um, in the city for a while, and uh, French Quarter Fest has always, from my experience from dealing with them for this short amount of time, are very interested in expanding the experience and, right. and catering to different audiences to be more inclusive. Right. So, um, you know, definitely try to reach a, a younger generation and trying to figure out some cool ways to do that. And, uh, you know, I guess the DJ idea had floating around for a while so you know me coming into the mix it was like yo let's let's bounce this off a ride i was right. like we definitely need to do that and it's, it's came to fruition now i think the conversation about inclusivity and all activities within jazz fest whether it's french quarter fest jazz fest armstrong festival whatever it is i think that's something that's been at the forefront and so having people like you at the table on the planning stages of this it seems like it came to fruition what it is you wanted I'm, I'm just happy I get to help put my people on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like, cut my people a check. Like, right. let's go. You know, put them on the platform. Uh, let's give everybody a chance to shine. And, you know, that helps to expand the whole experience, you right. know, and make it greater year after year. Is there something this year that you're looking forward to? I know that you are DJing everywhere and you're consistently busy all the time. You just, he just ran down his schedule to me for this weekend and I don't even see how he's going to give room for sleep. What do you look forward to this year? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I think what what I was excited to see has already happened. Like, everybody is in place. You know, like, the opportunity has been given uh, and people whose names are on the schedule that haven't had a chance to, you know, like, they might have been out here as a fan or a customer to kind of, like, see what was going on. Right. But now, you know, they have a chance to officially be involved as a part of the weekend um, and deliver that experience you know, to the fans out here. So, right. you know, 
having, you know, like my homie DJ Hallaback sent me a text earlier today. He was yeah. like, yo, like I'm done, you up next. Like, <laughs> I feel good, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I played a part in, you know, making sure he got an opportunity to be on the stage and do his thing, you know? Yeah. I'm doing it tonight, tomorrow, um, I, the artist is gonna be out here DJing, you know what I'm saying? I help get her plugged in and right. uh Hot Sis is gonna be out here with TBC Brass Band. Everybody get your zone. Sunday, <laughs> five for Icy Girl and Poppy H gonna be out here on the Gumbo um little set. Yeah. Uh Flag Boy Gives and the Brass Artists is gonna be playing. Oh. Water C is gonna be out here doing their thing. So it's like being able to be involved with all of my people out here and help to contribute like that's that's what I look forward to and that's right. what I'm happy about. And that's just why we need people like you at the table though, that we can get more of our people on the scene. Yeah, we, we need to be here, you know, we represent. Okay, so tell me this. You're gonna get on the stage you're getting on the stage this weekend. I'm I'm going on in like ten minutes. Oh what he's time, going no, he's going on in ten minutes. What's the clock? You, I don't know. What time <laughs> you have thirty more minutes. Okay, it's I five o'clock. Minutes. Five o'clock. Okay. He's going into thirty minutes. But when you get up there, when you typically play a festival, obviously different from playing a club, give me the DJ secrets because I uh my friend DJ Vintage, I love him very That's much. My dog. But I always like joke with him when he's playing, like, I can easily do this and he said you win. How do you develop the skills? I don't even know how to play the next song on my playlist. It's just just years of practice and experimentation. Like Is every there anything time that went bad? You? My first gig. Your first gig? What my, was that my like? First, my first DJ gig, um, it was a 13-year-old birthday party uh -huh. for my friend Carmen, who used to live across the, uh, the, the, the apartment from me in, um, when I used to live in Georgetown in the east. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. She moved, uh, you know, they moved on up. They got a crib out of Eastover. Yeah. And, you know, I was a partner, so it was like I DJed her 13th birthday party. She went to Fantasy Williams. Right. And, you know, I'm young. I'm 14 years old, and I think everybody likes the same music I like. <laughs> so when I go on this party, like, I'm playing Tribe Called Quest and yeah. Brand New being in, like, all of this backpack, hip-hop, New right. York, East Coast stuff. Um, you know, I thought it went well. But then the, the next year, this girl, you know, we just happened to be talking um, at 35, you know, beginning the first couple of days back to school. She was like, um, oh, you DJ Carmen party. And I was like, yeah. She was like, I heard you can't DJ. Oh, and I was no. Like, <laughs> like, no. Like, just, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of like, you know, the, the early dawn on me that everybody does not like what I like. Right. And I need to find out what the people want to hear so that they can be like, yo, we had the greatest time ever. Right. So like after that, you know, I was off to the races. Like, let me see what, you know, then I, then it was kind of like a, a science thing for me. Like, let me check this out. Let me right, see right. if this works and finding out what goes on. And then, um, you know, when I was at Dillard University, uh, like second semester of my freshman year, I started doing like all of the events. So the basketball games, the parties, the poetry nights, like, oh, we just need some music in the cafeteria. Raj, come set up. Right. So, you know, I really kind of had a laboratory to figure out uh, what people wanted to hear, how they wanted to hear it, um, you know, and I'm still figuring it out now. Like every every gig is practice for the next one. Right. All right. So people can see you on which stage? The Posigen stage in 30 minutes, five right. o'clock. So if you're not here, drive fast, get here. We we gonna do it. All right, and it's pretty good crowd out here, but it's not too too packed, so people can still get out here today. So you can check out DJ Raj's move. There should uh, be some always. parking on the street somewhere. You yeah, I'm sure it. there is. Look, I love you so much. I've I always appreciate appreciated it. you, and appreciate what you're doing not only for the culture, but what you bring in in the culture into places where we don't typically see it. That thank makes you. me excited. All right, so we know that you gotta go, DJ Raj's move. Thank you. See you, L. Hi, I'm John Butte, here with my friends Greg Grove from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Many know him as Roger Dickerson. I'm a good 34 years in playing these songs and trying to pe make, make people shake their butts. But most know him as DJ Raj Smooth. 
as a part of the French Quarter Fest board. He's played a major role in bringing the brand new DJ stage to life. I definitely think it's going to be a great addition to the French Quarter Fest lineup just because, you know, it's, it's a party and what's a party without a DJ? It's an idea that was easy to get behind for the stage sponsor, Posigen Solar. Hearing Raj Smoove and his plans for how he's curating this was really inspiring. And for DJs like Jessica Simmons. But you can call her DJ Jess. Performing as a solo act was a dream that she's now living. Seven years, is, it doesn't seem that long to me compared to some of the other DJs that I know. So I'm excited to just be... Um... Hi, I'm John Butte, here with my friend Greg Rose. Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Let's head back out to Spanish Plaza. Hey, Eric, you got the fun assignment today. Yeah, Lily, we, we are, as we said early in the show, I mean, it's a tale of two venues where our hearts go out to the folks in Slidell. Um, but we are starting today at uh, 10 o'clock this morning, the beginning of probably the world's largest free festival, the French Quarter Festival. I'm here with James Andrews, the legendary James Andrews. Thank you. Uh, we're down here in the Spanish Plaza in front of our Love Louisiana stage. Uh, where James will be, you'll be uh, uh, doing double duty on Sunday. You're yeah. closing out the festival, the festival. in Jackson Square, Jackson Square, and then you'll be on our stage doing an interview yeah, on Sunday afternoon. Absolutely. It's going to be a wonderful time in New Orleans. And you've got, this is a big year for you. You have a new album yeah, out. You're playing the, the French Quarter Fest. You're playing Jazz Fest. Uh, the new album is, is the new album uh, is, is, is just out. It's just out. Yeah, it's on uh, everywhere online, and plus it's at the Music Factory. It's going to be at Peaches Records. And what I like about this one, you put this one on vinyl, because mm -hmm. vinyl right now is selling more than CDs. Yeah, the vinyl is selling. Everybody like the vinyl, and it's got a great sound to it. Now, what number album is this for you? Oh, uh, it can be the 10th or something like that. And do you do a lot of original stuff on this? Yeah, this is a lot of original stuff, and plus we did the traditional gospel called Oh Happy Day, and we turned it into a New Orleans second and street party. And, and uh, you know, you put on such a fun show, you and your band, uh, you'll be on this on the, the big stage in Jackson Square closing yeah. out the show. Your music is heard all over the world. All over the world, yeah. We just come from uh, Switzerland, and we just come from New York last night, and so we're going all over the world with this album. And you love the, the response you get for New Orleans music anywhere you go. Absolutely, New Orleans music is big all over the world. Everywhere we go, somebody's playing something from New Orleans, uh, some food from New Orleans somewhere. And you come from a very musical family. Come from the Andrews family, born and raised in the Treme. I know, yeah. and that's what I, when when you did the the the, the Treme song Treme. that John Butte wrote. Yeah. I mean, you really kind of made it your own. I, everything I touch, I make my own. You know, and it's a wonderful thing to be able to do that song and especially represent that neighborhood, the Six Ward Treme. And now, do do you and your brother Troy Trombone Shorty play together a lot? Absolutely. When we get together, we make it magic. And he's got a new studio. Uh, uh, over in, in New York. The Buck Jump. The Buck Jump Studio. Buck Jump Studio. Is that where you recorded yours? Absolutely. We recorded the whole album over there. And now, who was your producer on that? Was it your I'm brother? I'm the producer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm the producer on this album, and I wrote all the songs, and I published all the songs, so it's all us. And what's what's your next gig after that? You, you'll do Jazz Fest Jazz after Fest, the French so Quarter Fest? we'll be going uh, to Europe. And, and now, and now, how many cities do you you hit in Europe? Because you have, you, you live in France for part of the year. Yeah, sometimes over there. But we're gonna be in Europe for uh, probably a couple of months. 
All right, and you're going to play for us this morning. We're so oh, glad to have you. I play for the city of New Orleans. Well, and here we are on the beautiful riverfront. There's a big cruise yeah, ship going by right, right now. It's just, it's just gorgeous, yeah. and the sun's getting ready to come up. I mean, you couldn't have a better setting than here on the on the riverfront Absolutely. here in New Orleans. We got a wonderful city here in New Orleans. It's a great place to be and a great place to be from. All right, so tell me what you're going to play for us. I'm going to play a song called Hit It Big off our new album. Hit right. It Big. James Thank Andrews. You. ready to celebrate French Quarter Festival. Presented by Chevron, it all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at frenchquarterfest.org and download the free app today. From WWL, Louisiana. Welcome to WWL Plus, where you are streaming us. Happy French Quarter Fest, the kickoff of French Quarter Fest. You can hear the music here behind us. We're in the Spanish Plaza at the Love Louisiana WWL stage. We're having so much fun today. We've had a ton of people already come out, win some great prizes, but we get to be the very first of the interviews here at the brand new Love Louisiana stage. So I want to welcome Zita here. Thank you so much for having guys. us. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. We're really excited to have you. Just go around and just introduce yourselves. Sure. Um, I'm Michael Mullen. I'm the lead singer and trombone player, and I do weird things with the trombone, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm Bradford Lewis. I'm lead and only guitar, I guess. I tell Michael plinks away at the guitar. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dylan Calluet, I play lead bass, also the loudest guy on stage, predominantly. Nice, nice. Always. Uh, I'm Kai Melanson. I play drums, and I don't do weird things with my trombone. Good to know. Thank you for sharing, even oversharing. We're really excited to have you guys here. I want to start for the first question that I asked you earlier, because the way we got the name is very interesting. I'm always intrigued when we find out how a band decided to choose what they're going to go by, because that's everything, right? That's your that's your logo, it's your brand, it's how identity, people know yeah. you, it's your identity. Yeah. And y'all's is very fun. So who wants to share that story? So we started off as Next Gen 5 uh, with a Roman numeral. Okay, wait, you didn't tell me that part. <laughs> yeah, so there was a lot of that confusion there because everyone thought we were Next Gen V. Yeah. And okay. we, we, were look, we were looking for a name change and there was this shop in Mandeville where we were going to high school called Zetas that sold like a bunch of crystals and cool t-shirts and jewelry and stuff really like that. Really earthy and holistic. Yeah, we used okay. to go there all the time and we just decided to name the band after that. We eventually got the blessing, and now Zita herself, the owner of the shop, is like renting her one of her houses to me. And we've been writing the record there and doing all that stuff. So yeah, I love it. Very, very homegrown, very local. Yeah. Oh, Grassroots roots there. Full yeah. circle thing. Yeah. Shout I love out that. Next Gen V. Shout out. Mega shout <laughs> that's out. the throwback. Yeah. That's that's your throwback <laughs> Thursday. That's cool. <laughs> and so, how did we all meet? How did you guys get together? Um, I guess we, it kind of everybody kind of trickled in, but it was. Um, I guess Dylan and I are the oldest original members to the Next okay. Gen 5 sort of uh, family there. But uh, we, we, a friend of mine, I went to NOCA for high school, and a friend of mine from there introduced me to Bradford, and he was like, this guy played Master of Puppets by Metallica at lunch today, and it sounded identical to the record. And I was like, well, I got to hear it. So at lunch, we brought him okay. Into, <laughs> we brought him into jam. <laughs> Dylan's dad met Kai at a restaurant he was working at, actually, and was like, you know, he was like, yeah, I found this drummer from Japan, and I was like, screw it, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then and then he blew me away the first time I heard him. Yeah. So, yeah, and then the rest is history. Next gen quality. Next gen quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next gen quality. V. There you go. So we have the the origin stories. I like the dad joke. It was good. We have the origin stories here and how you guys met. Your sound is also. We're talking about this homegrown, very local. It's very, very. Uh, almost like throwback New Orleans because it has that like deep rock but also some funk bluesy and I would say it's something that a lot of people feel maybe that sound has kind of faded away and you guys are bringing it back in a really cool way yeah yeah I'd say that it also helps when you have George Porter as a mentor that's uh, been helping you out for years yeah, there you go. yeah, yeah. I think people like that We've been in the scene our whole life, like all of us have been in the scene. He, Kai grew up in Japan and he's lived there until he was 18, but he was coming here for Jazz Fest every year doing stuff like that. Like all of us cool. were bred in this environment of like, like he said, George Porter, you know, I grew up down the street from Mike Lemler, his keyboard player, uh, Ivan Neville, all the Neville family, like they've been very nice to us. Like, you also have it in your family. I have it, yeah. yeah. My yeah. dad's obviously a New Orleans musician himself and so, and his as well, his, yeah. are, his are New Orleans musicians as well. So it's like, we took those influences, but we grew up listening to classic rock music, all of us, and so that is like unequivocally the sound. 
but all of the influences that span our entire lives sort of inform that. And so, uh, and then it culminates in whatever the heck we do. So it's well, fun. It's weird too because like I, I did a lot of stuff with Donald Harrison and you did Noka, so we like have jazz yeah. background mixed in too a little bit. Yeah, that too. Like jazz, funk, blues. I mean, that's kind of where the roots come from. Like I listened to a lot of Alan Tucson when I was younger as well. He's like a blues master. Like Dylan, like you said, like doing jazz and funk stuff with a lot of people. Friday, everybody. Colleen Seely here out at French Quarter Fest here at Spanish Plaza. We are at the WWL Love Louisiana stage here with Sax Kicks M. Yes, What's sir. Up? Yes, sir. All right, tell everybody your names. What's happening, man? You go first. I'm Albert. Albert? I'm, I'm Alfred. And Alfred. Yeah. It's easy to get mixed up, people. Yeah, be right? careful. Yeah, we look just alike. My dad good. does it, which is weird because there's some cosmetic differences. Yeah, you it's two? the bun. The bun, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just the bun. Yeah, and the glasses. <laughs> yep. That's the biggest difference between us. Exactly. Like societally. And I would say the bun too. But um, yeah, so you guys are performing today. What time, where? Uh, two o'clock at the Jack Daniels stage. It's gonna be right super, there. super If you dope. can see that behind us, there's a band up there right now on the Jack Daniels stage. That's where we'll be at 2.10. So yup, yup, yup. If you're on the couch right now, watching this on your Facebook, on your IG or whatever, come on out here for 2.10. Yes. And Spanish Plaza, this is where we're at. Just left of the French Quarter looking at Jackson Square. Now tell me about how you guys got together. Indeed. Good. Where were we? We were on the road, right? We were on the road. Specifically, Detroit is a city that I remember where we really like kind of locked in and started chopping game. Um, he was formerly in uh, Tank of the Bangers. I opened one of those tours, got to, got to know my man. We started like chopping game. I actually have the very first picture we ever took together. Aww. Um, and after that, you know, we just kind of started talking and we got in the studio, made some music, started laughing and Sax Kicks Ab was born. You just hit it off. So you guys met on tour, two yes. separate tours. Yeah, and we were like cool together. We were like made the same jokes, kind of like enjoyed the same stuff and just kind of gravitated towards each other. For sure. And then uh, our manager, Tavia, was like, Y'all should get together in the studio. So we get together in the studio and we make one song for like three hours, but we also laughed for like two and a half hours. True indeed. And made like 30 minutes of music. So it was really cool and it was a good fit. The manager obviously saw the chemistry there between you two. Now we've had you both on the morning show before. Yes. What makes your shindig unique? You go. Ooh, what makes our shindig unique? Sh uh, unique shindig. Um, hmm, Can I have part. an alternate pronunciation for hey, shindig? Yo. Uh, Language of origin. Your duo. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Your okay. Our duo. It's actually really. I don't know, man. I think uh, sense of humor is very important to us, but we take our music extremely serious. You know what I mean? Like we're we're, we're uh, musicians first, and uh, we kind of use sense of humor as a way to kind of like translate it. Um, and so I think that's what kind of differentiates us from a lot of different bands. And. Uh, I mean, I'll just say it, we're like really, really good. High level of craft, and Alfred is one of the best rappers in the city and the world, and I'm a very good instrumentalist, so we bring that together in a way that is like, you know, a lot of hip hop right now is very programmed, and it's very excellent, and it's actually probably never been better because more excellent people can share this stuff because of Dude. the democratization of distributing music on the internet. Um, but like, we have something unique to contribute because we have, what, a combined like 40 years of live performance much. experience? Pretty <laughs> much. So we just have like a unique thing with being funny, but also we're like, hey, let's be funny, but kind of with a point and with this like elite level of craft and just like, goofing around and it's like maybe we say something um, and you know what 
entertainment at all costs. That's 100%. what it's about. Yeah, and what's funny is that because you guys are so unique, and have, for those who have not watched them perform before, do so because they are not like any other band, and you have original music as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I actually saw your saxophone videos in my Facebook feed. I'm like, how did we become friends? This is before they came on the morning show. We actually were in a saxophone jazz workshop <laughs> years ago at Tipitina's and Snug Harbor and met mutually through somebody else, and then, what, 15 years later? Yes. I was like, this guy looks familiar. How do we know this? This is a mutual friend, and then We just met at the studio, are. yeah. We were, yeah. At, we were at WWO, and I was like, that's Colleen. Yeah. yeah. I think you hit me up on Facebook afterwards, and I was like, the last message was from, like, 2012. <laughs> it's a different timeline, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Indeed. Uh, so, with Tank and the Bangas, have you performed with her, too, or was um, you did? That was Albert. Together? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was in okay. that band for uh, almost 10 years, like, nine years, yeah. That's where we met. We were, he was opening for us, and we were on the road, and that's where we all met. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. And I heard that you got mixed up with one of her saxophone players. It's so funny. My good buddy, Etienne Stouffle, like, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's got his own thing going on now, and he's, uh, he's uh, you know, I don't want to put him on blast or make any statements he's about, putting you on blast. about his relationship status. But back in the day, when he was uh, a young buck, roaming wild and free, so to speak, uh, he would be on the dating apps and get confused with me for whatever reason. And this actually led to a hilarious incident where somebody messaged him. He was like talking to somebody on Tinder or somebody. And then they went to my profile and I have a girlfriend and, and make it known and have for a long time, like six years. Are you still together? Yeah. N not like six years. It is six years. <laughs> Love you, babe. And he got hit up because they went saw his they saw my profile based on his Tinder profile and they were like, why are you lying to me? Why do you have a girlfriend? You told me you were single. And they was like, and he was just like, ha ha ha, that's a different person. And they were like, no bro, why are you, why are you trying to run game on me? And he was like, this is ridiculous. Like, so I don't know how we get mixed up, but it's happened a lot. He would walk out on stage um, when I wasn't on tour with the band and people would be like, Albert, <laughs> what's up? I don't look anything it's alike. It's so funny. We don't look anything alike. Beautiful man, Yeah. but we don't look guys. anything alike. You know? So that's how he figured it out was, okay, I'm associated with him because you two were intertwined together. Oh, I, that's who I must be getting mixed up with. I like to think maybe I helped him sometimes, not just hurt him, but it sounds like I mostly hurt his prospects. Yeah, it's, just a, little, it's a little crazy. <laughs> From this angle, it's like, what? Hey, man, you hate me. Yeah, I know. I saw, I'm really no hate. Just just trying to relate facts, okay? That's what it's, it's called. Facts kicks out. Facts kicks right? out. We're about from facts. facts to facts. We're, yes, we're changing. And speaking of. April 15th, it's tax kicks out. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, <laughs> like we all know that. Okay, so how did you get involved in the music industry? Did you grow up singing, performing? Yeah, um, for me personally, uh, I started rhyming around six years old. My oldest brother, uh, Landis Bangs, rest in peace, he um, started rhyming and kind of had a little bit of a buzz around the city. And so he inspired me to kind of rhyme. My middle brother, James, he also freestyled a lot. So that's kind of where I got both of those skills from. You flash forward a few years, I started writing, kind of created my own style. And uh, at June 6, 2009, at the age of 17, I performed at the Dragons Den for the very first time. And uh, it was addictive. That live aspect is just one of my favorite things. And you flash forward a few years, and we are on the cover of Offbeat. Oh! All sooky sooky now. <laughs> This is incredible, yeah. guys. And I had to laminate it and print it myself because Offbeat isn't physical anymore. Offbeat's fully digital. So Alfred Banks went to a print shop oh, himself. Yeah, you best believe. Took screenshots. Yes, and we I didn't did. bring the collated booklet he made as if it was a master's thesis. That's incredible. But he did binding. make his own magazine because he said, no, no, print media. I'm bringing you back. 100%, man. So this is a very, very big honor right here. It's super cool. Absolutely. Was that a dream of yours to be on yes. print magazine? So this is why it's a big deal to go yeah. get it laminated and be like, I'm going to be of course, on the of day course, cover. Of course. The thing is, this is our first cover together. And so I'm super excited about that because we've been working very hard for the past like year uh, specifically to kind of get things going and some of the love and energy we've been getting is just so cool so to see it kind of reverberate through the city and start to really make a uh, make an impact it's beautiful man because me and this man work very hard on our music and on our craft so this is really really cool was it your dream to be making this face no on, i will say on, when i first saw the picture i was like what but i love can you it make man that face for us? <laughs> yeah i <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's actually how you look in some of your videos that I've watched from the music videos that you guys do. So we have we have a weird dynamic. It's like he's the guy that will go there, and I'm more the straight guy that's like, I don't really want to. Do I'm trying that. to drag him along. Most of our relationship, maybe what makes us unique, back to the earlier question, is um, me testing Alfred's boundaries and him resisting them. <laughs> a good push-pull balance. Yeah, it's Big a tension. Facts. 
There's Big a narrative fans. built in. Take notes for rela relationships, people. All right, so at what point do you feel you really became successful that you're like, I'm making it? Um, Has that happened yet? <laughs> I mean, we're here. I mean, we're, in alone, we're in the WWL. We're in the WWL. I mean, I feel like right yeah. now we made it right here because we're at French Quarter Fest, baby. On, man. on Friday on the Jack Daniels stage at 210 at Spanish Plaza with Colleen on, in the man. WWL tent on it's the river. Up. So, so we made it. And it's stuck. You're it's stuck and it won't off. come down. Yeah. And we're part I feel like we made it. I feel like I've arrived now. Yeah. So tell us about what instruments you play. You're diverse with I your play life. saxophone and flute and piano and bass and drums and guitar. I played tuba in the eighth grade. I played bassoon in the ninth grade. And uh, I've stuck a clarinet in my mouth before. Okay. All Any, right. That you, what? No, I, right. didn't, I didn't hear anything. I mean, did you actually? I tried. It didn't sound good. Okay. No. <laughs> you said what I play, not what I was good at. Ah, so what are you actually good at? Saxophone All of the above? and flute. Okay, just saxophone. Yeah, no, the other ones are pretty bad. But make it till you make it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and I saw what? a montage that you posted recently, too, where you actually incorporated multiple instruments, but it was all you playing. Yeah, I learned how to um, I learned how to edit myself in, so I was playing like bass and drums and piano and sax and flute. Yeah. It's amazing. It, it's it was really, really cool. And I've been loving, I've been like really practicing the instruments. That's what I love to do. I've learned a lot about myself, especially over the past year, um, doing this project with Alfred, about what's actually sustainable for me as an artist, what do I actually like, and it's playing the instruments. Like, I live and breathe to just like, play along to records of people I love, learn stuff, and then compose music and record it in myself. I, I just love that, and it's like, it's what makes me happy, and it's, it's what I do, and so like, I don't know, I just, I can't even describe it. It's kind of new to me to feel like, I was so focused on like, Honestly, like, when I was in sixth grade, I saw a great saxophonist named Kirk Whalen play for the first time. And I was like, I just want to play saxophone or something and, like, tour the world and stuff. And I, and I did that at 23. And then after that, it was like, oh, shit, like, what do I do? Oh, crap, what do I do now? And then I, like, I just was like, well, I got to focus on the instruments. I got to double down on what makes me happy, and that's the instruments. And, uh, you know, not using profanity on uh, WWL. <laughs> Thank you for that's that. That's what makes me happy. That's what makes me happy, you know? Uh, yeah. I, I, so yep. Where are some of the places that both of you have traveled separately together around oh, the man. world? Oh, um, man. We recently just started kind of touring. So things kind of changed for us this past August of 2023 is when the social media kind of started making some noise, uh, going viral, as it were. And uh, so we just started touring. We just did our first Texas run together. I mean, you know, let's some, some. We're 30-year-olds talking about virality on social media. It's pretty normal. <laughs> uh, but we for, did our first uh, Texas run. Uh, Dallas, I'm sorry, Fort Worth, uh, Austin, Houston, all those shows are really cool. We had the Midwest, we did uh, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Those shows are incredible. Uh, we did Charlotte, North Carolina on a Wednesday night, and it was really, really cool. Um, an experience I'm sure me and you both would never forget uh, as it pertains to some of the people in the crowd. It was fun. Uh, but now nah, we're really starting to hit the road together, and but separately, I mean, this man is Romania, right? Well, going all over the world. And we're putting out a song every month. Every single month. And that's yeah. going to actually increase us to be able to go out on the road. And you, maybe you can just make a lot of rotations around the world. We are so looking forward to both of your success together. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. And check them out 2 o'clock at the Jack Daniels stage. Sax kicks out, baby. Thank you, Colleen. Hi, I'm John Gucci. Here with my friends, Greg Grove from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. And speaking of food, one of my favorites, one of my favorites, Robert Harrison is joining me. Yes, and I'm yes. saying he's my favorite. Malik knows why I'm saying he's my favorite, right? Yes, he does. He does. It's so awesome to be out here with you today. You, you know what? If you don't know Robert, you need to get to know him. He is of Loretta's authentic pralines. And let me tell you, Miss Loretta, thank you. Um, you know, thinking of her, obviously. And you now taking the helm and you're moving this forward. Yes. I have to say, you have some of the most unique pralines in the city of New Orleans and the unique beignets, by the way. Yes, we have our crab beignet. We have our famous Pauline beignet, and this was all a legacy. My mom, we wanted to continue it, and she took two things that were so New Orleans, right. and she mashed them together. You have the Pauline filling, Pauline icing, and then we have the nerve to do powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes. 
It yeah. is so amazing. Look, you know, one of my favorite things is sweet potato cookies. Oh, yes. Yes, and we have that out here. We also have our shoe sole, our proline cookie, and our original proline. I will tell you this. Now that you guys are moving forward, I know that you're very busy, staying really yes. busy. Any major changes that are happening right now? Something new you introduced to the menu that we'll see at French Quarter Fest? So we also have our proline shoe sole, which is a flat pastry made of cinnamon sugar, a little bit of pecans and cinnamon on it. We also bought out our world famous pictured here Ooh. stuffed crab meat beignet okay and we do that with lump jumbo crab meat a uh -huh. little bit of awesome sauce okay and we just throw the holy trinity in there it's just you know so awesome. you make sure you stop by and you get you some robert thank you so much thank for you. joining us and taking a picture at the wwl yes, love louisiana yes, yes. say tell everybody to come on out oh please come on out first quarter <laughs> fest 2024 Moving on. eyes on the storm. Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin is in Lafitte from our Mobile Forecast Center. The Mobile Forecast Center, sponsored by Nissan, has Southeast Louisiana covered. Get the latest weather data. Real-time weather information. We can fill in the gaps where data may be missing. Up to the minute forecast from your local weather experts. We can drive it out and see exactly what's happening. And live video from inside the storm. The Mobile Forecast Center, sponsored by Nissan, only on WWL-TV. And now it's time for Eyewitness News, the South's most complete and up-to-the-minute coverage of local, national, and world news. Well, all I was trying to do was to be naturally Nolans. <laughs> WWL-TV, celebrating 65 years. This region is just special. It's family, it's culture, it's the most unique city in the United States. My name is Todd Smith. I'm President and General Manager of WWL-TV and WUPL. One of the things that we pride ourselves on is that commitment to our community. The folks who work at WWL, WUPL, we all live here. Kids go to school here, we belong to church communities here, neighborhoods. We have a vested interest in making sure that this region does well because it's personal to us. Obviously, local news is where we hang our hat. We will tell the story. We'll dig, get people what they need to know. But when we help people who are in need, when we can help a community get back on its feet, that's the most rewarding thing. That's the thing that you can't put a price on. WWL and WUPL are Louisiana made, Louisiana proud. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us for the Eyewitness Morning News. Let's get straight to our local weather expert, Peyton Malone. Hey, good morning, Eric. The clouds are rolling in. You will want your umbrella by this afternoon. And make sure you give yourself some extra time on the roof today. Leslie, we're coming out to breaking news. And we have breaking news out of Jefferson Parish. Let's send it out to our crew on the scene. Leslie, I'm still here at 18th and Severn where you can see crews are still working in the area. This morning, I've got your recipe. Tune in weekdays from 4.30 to 9 on WWL-TV. WWL has the best online news in the country, and you can too with the WWL-TV app. Far down the drain, investigative team has the details. Get hyper-local forecasts from your local weather experts. Some showers to develop by Sunday, but more so into early next week. Watch breaking news the moment it happens. We have live team coverage tonight. See what's happening in your neighborhood. Personalize your alerts. Stay informed with the WWL TV app, sponsored by Ochsner Health, innovating healthcare. Every day we're flooded with new information, trying to make sense of it all. We can help clear up that confusion. So we're going to break this down for you right now. This one needs context. We are staying on top of today's breaking news. Here's what we know right now. Eleanor Tabone has more in tonight's top story. Let's start with Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin with the latest. There is a tornado on the ground. You need to be in that safe room immediately. When news gets complicated, we'll give you clear answers. Watch WWL TV News at 10. Hi, I'm John Boutte, here with my friends Greg Rowe from Everon and Mia X. 
We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. All right, thank you very much, Brandon. And yeah, we did. And, and uh, you know, we're thinking about the folks in, in Slidell, mm -hmm. but we're also here ready to start off one of the biggest free fests in the country, French Quarter Fest. Emily Madero, the, the, the CEO of, of uh, French Quarter Fest. Uh, you must have had some tense moments yesterday. We sure did. We were just really grateful that it was the day before the festival opened. We were able to anticipate, make arrangements to batten down the hatches, make all the stages safe. Did you have any damage or anything? You know, we had some minor damage just because the amount of water that the sites took in, but we had done a lot of preparation and we were most concerned about personal safety and yeah. crew members and staff members being out here. So um, we just pivoted everything a little bit later in the day and, and we're really grateful that we were able to load in on Time. Speaking yeah. of those crew, crew members, definitely had to put in some overtime, and I know that sort of shifted when they were setting up. It pushed it back. Also, you had some earlier setup. So for them, I'm sure they were putting in a lot of hours. Oh, yes. There's been a lot of moving chess pieces behind the scenes. Late night, early morning. Our food vendors have, have done a lot of work late night and early morning. You know, same with all of the vendors that we have here on site, whether it's sound equipment, stages, putting mm -hmm. signs up. So we're doing everything we can to welcome everybody at 11 o'clock right. when the music starts. And where we are here on the riverfront at Spanish Plaza, this is all new this year. This is something you're adding for the first time. Uh, at French Quarter Fest. I mean, we're thrilled. It's such a beautiful site. As you can see, it's a gorgeous site right on the riverfront. We've got, you know, the fountain behind us. I think this is going to be one of the most energized, activated sites that we have at French Quarter Festival. And the lineup at the French, at the Jack Daniel stage is just incredible Which is, this year. Yeah, to our left over by the river walk, to, uh, to our right, rather. I don't know why I left from my right. <laughs> uh, and then to the left of us is going to be the new food stage, which is really something new and, and kind of neat. Yeah, we have two new stages this year. So we're expanding musical genres for the first time. We're bringing uh, DJ talent. So New Orleans has such a wealth of talent here and diversity of talent. So you can go to the PosiGen DJ stage right over here in front of the aquarium. And then on the other side of the aquarium, for the first time, we're showcasing our culinary talent. So Love Chef that. Kevin Belton will be interviewing. I've our heard food of him. Vendor. Yeah. <laughs> I know you that should, guy. You should know Kevin. <laughs> He's That's a nice awesome. guy. It's going to be great. I mean, the food talent here is part of the reason why people love this festival so much. It's everything from street food to fine dining, and you can go and you can learn about the chefs, their culinary journey, the recipes, and all the dishes that you can try here at the festival. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Even more food this year than last. I know. Always more food. Always a good thing. Calories don't count great. at festival. Absolutely. You get your steps in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I know. And, you know, when we're talking about the schedule, everything stands so people can still come out and enjoy everything just as it is. Um, you know, what do you think? You've been doing this so long. You said since 2017, the festival has a long history. What do you think is the thing that makes the French Quarter Fest so special? I mean, I I think it has really organically evolved quite literally from the streets of New Orleans. It's a big block party. It's a family reunion. It's very authentically New Orleans. It mm -hmm. features only Louisiana talent. You can take so many festivals in major cities and put them anywhere in the United States, but the only way that you're going to experience French Quarter Festival is right here in New Orleans. And for the city, it brings in a lot of tourists, a lot sure. of locals. Mm -hmm. A lot of locals sometimes don't get to come to the quarter that much or you know, because sometimes, you know, it's kind of hard to, to, to park and things like that. But I think everybody changes their attitude for French Quarter Fest. It's just, like I said, it's a really joyous family reunion. You're going to see friends that you haven't seen forever. You know, it's kind of like Mardi Gras. There's so many different ways that you can experience it, whether you like being out here on the riverfront, you like the funk bands, or you can find really quiet, intimate moments with traditional jazz. You know, we're for the first time we're producing at the BK House. It's a beautiful historical property. You can sit in the garden and enjoy some incredible music. And great it's for New Orleans, yeah. a great economic impact. Emily, yeah. thank you very much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. And speaking of some of the great music that we have, we have some of the students that we are introducing you this morning from Loyola. They're going to be performing on Friday. Let's get to- On the Loyola stage. On the Loyola stage, so it's easy to remember. Let's get to the kissing disease. Take it away. 
To say it's the first year, Lufu India Saran will be a food vendor at French Quarter Fest. Being there is a really big honor for us. They're coming out the gate swinging. This is going to be the Kima roll. This is Indian Chinese influence. This is something we are doing out of the box, which is not in our regular menu. This is our mosa. This is the goat. This is what our trademark. This is the butter chicken. We have fed a lot of people around the city. So I think this is going to be a different experience, but we are definitely strong. We are definitely ready for this, yeah. It's, it's insane. It's the fourth year at the festival for Southern, so they already know what to expect. Like we literally have a line the entire time we're open, and that's the award-winning chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich is top of mind for many, but they're bringing back a crowd favorite too. And that is our fish sandwich. We slice these cucumbers ourselves, marinate them, everything made from scratch. We made more than enough pies for anybody who wants to enjoy our family's central recipe. Seasoned French Quarter Fest veterans, Mrs. Wheat's Meat Pies will be back again for the 40th year in a row. They'll have them festival exclusives too. Crab and artichoke. And then the shrimp and I do is kind of like a Cajun gumbo roux. Food is at the heart of everything they do, but it's the people that keep them going. Seeing my fam uh, best family and friends that I've built relationships with. It's kind of like a reunion every time we do this. To meet more new people, you know, that is the most big excitement for me. Leah McNeil, WWL, Louisiana. Hi, I'm John Butte, here with my friends Greg from Chevron and Mia X. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features over 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11 through 14. Get the schedule at FrenchQuarterFest.org and download the free app today. Don't miss French Quarter Festival from WWL. Hey, good morning. Yes, we are a little on the side here because I'm hanging out with the Kissing Disease uh, Lola students who are going to be performing. Very excited because it is your first festival performance. Yes. That's very exciting. So you're gonna be on Friday. I wanna talk a little bit about how you guys got together. You guys are obviously all students at Loyola. Yeah. What was that process like? Um, basically, we were all in class together. I was in class with two, and I just really wanted to form a band, so I kind of just went up to them and was like, hey, <laughs> let's do something. I love it. Now you guys are creating uh, beautiful music, and you guys perform um, some covers, but mostly your own original. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so what would you describe your music as? And no one's, well, they've been listening this morning, of course, tuning in, but how would you describe your musical sound? Yeah, well, um, we're doing like an acoustic vibe right but we're mostly like a pop rock ensemble I'd say yeah and I didn't even introduce anyone tell them your name oh I'm Eddie okay and you want to introduce oh one? I'm Maddie and then, who um, else do we and have then here? this is Dylan and this is Spencer hi guys you guys sound great this morning and first first festival I want to ask how does it feel uh, it feels really awesome. It's super exciting. I gotta say thank you to our school, Loyola, because they, they're really helping us set this thing up, you know? It's awesome. Super excited. And we don't have to go into detail, but we learned that you came up with a name? Um, yeah. A little bit? Okay, I'll put him on the spot here. Are you excited to be performing at your first festival? Very excited. Yeah. Yeah. French Quarter Fest is huge. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. guys are going to be performing on um, the... Tell me again, the, the Loyola stage. Well, what did we get? Esplanade in the Shade stage. There we go. Okay, well, great talking with you guys, but we really want to listen to you. So I'm going to let you guys take it away, the kissing disease. Right. Verse two. Like a lover at night, I lie. Many know him as Roger Dickerson. I'm a good 34 <laughs> years in playing these songs and trying to make, make people shake their butts. But most know him as DJ Raj Smoove. As a part of the French Quarter Fest board, he's played a major role in the brand new DJ stage to life. I definitely think it's going to be a great addition to the French Quarter Fest lineup just because, you know, it's, it's a party and what's a party without a DJ? 
an idea that was easy to get behind for the stage sponsor, Posigen Solar. Hearing Raj Smoove and his plans for how he's creating this was really inspiring. And for DJs like Jessica Vince. But you can call it DJ Jess. Performing as a solo act was the dream that she's living. Seven years, it doesn't seem that long to me compared to some of the DJs that I know. So I'm excited to just be um, considered for it. For both these DJs, putting this corner of the world culture center stage is huge. There's more to the culture, y'all. So, you know, it's, yeah, it's different people that you can, can, you can highlight. To get a spot in a festival like that where traditionally pop hasn't necessarily been accepted or invited, I think it's a, a testament to the art form itself. And in true New Orleans fashion, you can expect nothing less than a party. Just come prepared to dance and sing and have a good time. A party with trees that will undoubtedly be made for all parties involved. Leah McNeil, WWL, Louisiana. And today kicks off day two. We can expect to see a lot of great press this weekend. And Colleen Seeley talked with uh, a Louisiana Zydeco legend, Rockin' Doopsie Jr. and Miss Louisiana USA about what we can expect all weekend long at the fest. All right, y'all. I'm bringing the sax back, baby. Let me dust this thing off. <sighs> Shake it for critters. <laughs> Let's do this. French Quarter Festival is this weekend and I have Rockin' Doopsie Jr. along with the newly crowned Miss Louisiana Cindy Taylor here to jam. Tell us about what's happening for this weekend and any upcoming shows that you have going on. Well, this weekend, as everybody knows, it's Louisiana's favorite free festival, French Quarter Fest. And also, starting off my weekend, I'll be in Lafitte at the Seafood Festival on Saturday from 4 to 5.30. But then Sunday, French Quarter Fest, one of my favorite festivals. Everybody come down. We're going to have a good time. We're going to Leslie Bonton Roulé on the Chevron stage, 6.40 to 8. Ain't no better way to close French Quarter Fest than the Dukes way because we're gonna shock a lock a rock And if you know him, you know he go, uh! Dude, the party never stops. Do you ever get tired? I never get tired. I never get tired. I sleep for about three hours, then I get up, I work out, then I start partying. That's 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 the life of the rock. That's the life. That's how I roll. Thank you so much, Dupy. For Thanks for having me. And look, us. Colleen didn't finish the split for y'all because it's hard to do splits on the concrete, but I'll do it for y'all on Sunday. Let's play Jalaya. Oh, not me. Not me. I'm not musically inclined. Well, try this. I bet you got it. I bet you got it. Come on, Miss Louisiana. Real good. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> that so, was so much fun. I like how you dubbed in your musical part. Oh yeah, because people know me for my music before I no, no, got on the news. No, no, dubbed in the music for No, that was us playing. I, I'm kidding. Oh, see, he, he, he was he, being mean and you were ready to yeah. be nice and just talk about your great story. Oh. You know what, my Anyways. people will take off for me, so if you're watching, everybody email Eric Pulse and tell him your email. <laughs> Love the inbox. <laughs> but Doopsie, Doopsie is a lot of fun. Uh, and you should you should play with this band. Yeah, I actually have played with him before. Have you? At Rock and Bowl. Yeah, oh, years cool. ago, over a decade ago, actually. Um, but you know, we all treat you like the king here, okay. right? I mean, do you feel like we do? No. Uh, well, go ahead. Let's take a look at what Doopsy has to say. So we have Mr. Louisiana. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Doopsy. So like. Hold it's on, Eric Colson might have a problem with that. Yeah, 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 we better not tell Eric. Eric think he's the Louisiana man, but I'm the Louisiana man, Eric, because I was born on a bayou. <laughs> so now you get your Not rebuttal. me, like, starting a little drama this morning with the boys. You know, I, I did a story on his dad, actually, when, when he had a big record out, so I, I've known uh, Doobsy for a long time. All right, and, and it was fun. I'm, I'm glad you're having fun with those pieces. Yeah, yeah, they're great. That looks like it was a good time. And so you're going to talk to Miss uh, Louisiana USA yeah. coming up. She was newly crowned just a couple of weeks ago, yeah, so I'll sit down with her, her for next week, so it'll be next Friday segment. Good, looking forward Will to that. Will there be more saxophone on that one, too? No. Oh, good. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, too bad. <laughs> I would love to hear more, Colleen. Goodness. And there's so much more that you can expect that they Hi, I'm John Boutier, here with my friends Greg Rolfam and Mia Evans. We're getting ready for French Quarter Festival, which features 300 musical performances on more than 20 stages. 
Chevron is proud to support the festival, a celebration of New Orleans music, culture, and cuisine. It all takes place April 11th through 14th. Get the schedule at frenchquarterfest.org.